Cardi is a brand new mechanic to Final Fantasy XIV that's coming with the addition of the brand new healer job Sage, and it honestly has me and many others extremely excited. This is a skill that is literally turning your damage spells, any damage spells on the Sage, into healing. To say the least, that's absolutely badass. This is a completely novel mechanic to 14 for healers, and it involves my favorite pastime of smashing faces as a healer. But this skill should come with a huge disclaimer, buyer beware. Before you jump on the hype train about this skill and the Sage, this cardio mechanic might make the Sage the absolute worst healer for you to pick if you aren't comfortable doing a lot of damage. To put it short, the Sage technically is punishing you every time you're not using a DPS skill. Think that especially when we compare it to other healers that have other different effects that it's going to become a lot more clear what I mean by this could actually technically be punishing you for not doing DPS. Cardia allows the Sage to designate one party member as the Cardia target. This party member will get a 170 pwns to heal every time you do a damaging attack. And for the record, Yes, that means any ability in the Sage's kit that does damage will trigger this 170 points to heal on the Cardia target. There is some interaction with other abilities in the kit, like Soteria is an off-global cooldown ability that the Sage can weave in between the Casts of Doses that doubles the potency, so 170 potency is the default, and then it boosts it since it's doubled to 340 potency per attack. And for the record, there is no doubt that that is extremely powerful. That is amazing, and I'm going to be using it a heck of a lot. But let's get real here for a second. Is Cardia the only form of slow, trickle, consistent, persistent regen that we have in this game? No. Am I saying that it's not going to be powerful? No, absolutely not. As I'm going to get into the mechanical depth of that pretty soon, it's extremely powerful. But the Cardia mechanic system isn't suddenly going to make every other healer invalid. Cardia is simply the Sage's version of the Scholar's Fairy, or the White Mage and the Astro have a regen effect that they can apply. So this isn't a brand new earth-shattering idea of, oh, I'm going to give a slow, persistent trickle heal. We have had it this entire time in this game. Now let's flesh out why I'm saying Cardia is such a big and important mechanic that is actually, in my opinion, the strongest of any of these options. So first off, it is a persistent effect that you don't need to refresh in combat on the global cooldown, which is going to make it similar to the Scholar's Fairy, which is a persistent background character that is going to be spamming heals on allies. And likewise, very different from the White Mage and the Astrologian's regen that requires a global cooldown cast and constant refreshes because White Mage and Astro regen has a set duration that it will be on a particular target, and they need to refresh it to keep that effect going. And since it's on the GCD, that means that they are going to be casting fewer damaging spells. But I think that this is a lot of hand-waving. I want to start to pin this down in terms of numbers, and so this this is going to actually be more significant than you actually might even first suspect when I said that. Pulling up top speed kill rankings involving the white mages indicated that regen was cast on average one time during E12S phase 2, and an average HP per second contribution was an abysmally low 132 HP per second. And guys, that is low. We're going to be talking about numbers in thousands soon. Actually, on the screen, you probably can see the data. I'm, I'm going to make sure that it's on the screen that you can compare it to the different effects. It's, it's really low. Now I'm going to contrast this to the Scholar with the fairy pet that is going to be consistently out there, throwing out Embrace passively. This is going to be the Scholar's pet throwing out 150 Ponzi. Note that pet Ponzi is a little bit lower than actually advertised on the skill, so it's more like probably 130-ish. But this embrace is constantly being thrown out and we're seeing an average of 72 embrace casts note this is from the fairy not the scholar and these casts averaged at 1.2 thousand hp per second but i will say that the maximum hp per second was a mind-blowing 2k hp per second and that's just from embrace which when you compare it to other skills and look at the hps values between the two tables you can see that is not insignificant that's huge so to say the least bleeding edge raiders and anyone in like enrage timers or trying to enrage prog is looking at cutting out as much healing as they can from the gcd and instead focusing on doing more damage and this is something that is definitely considered even in your progression rates because when you hit the enrage wall you're trying to just get as much damage as possible and yes even as a healer absolutely even as a healer that's enough about passive versus active application i think that we have explained that topic in great depth huge perk of cardia but the next perk is what makes me as a scholar scream at the top of my lungs with excitement. Control. You get to fully control the Cardi effect. Actually, let me give a little bit more context. As someone who has played Scholar since Realm Reborn, we used to use fairy macros. I would be like, okay, 
Eos or Celine at the time, <laughs> rip Celine, she would be controlled by me and I'd be like, okay, spam embrace on this particular target, spam embrace on this other target, or I, another common macro would be combining physic with embrace to be like a quote unquote cure two equivalent. It wasn't a cure two equivalent, it was so janky, but that's what we called it, guys. God, I've been playing this game too long to be able to cite this crap. This was a major pain point in Shadowbringers that I definitely have raised in my own videos a few times now, where we don't have any fairy macros to aim the embrace cast. This is all automated by Selene and Eos in the background. We have no control over where they're going. So say I have Seraph out, which is a very powerful cooldown, and her casts of her own little embrace equivalent that applies a little bit shield on top is actually going to sometimes hit <laughs> chip damage on DPS rather than focus on the tank, which has been a huge point of pain. I've like literally glared at my screen like, why are you healing the chip damage DPS that is not under threat worth the tanks getting wailed on? And so now when we look at the other healers, so White Mage and Astro, this has never been a problem for them because they can apply their regen to a particular target and regen will keep ticking on that one target. But here we're getting ahead of ourselves and being like, oh my god, that's so much better. No, that still isn't, because that can lead to a ton of overheal if not timed out properly and be essentially wasted cast, because you really might want to have the regen effect be like more flexible, change targets, and that is what the Scholar's Fairy does do on its own. And so while I do have some issues with the Scholar Fairy, I also have issues with regen. Neither of these systems are really perfect. Actually, when you talk to like high-end ass and white mage players, this is definitely a grievance that they have. They're like, why would I cast regen? Most of it is gonna be overhealing. So flexibility is really something that even they desire. It's always the trick, right? It's just like, you want the control, but you also want the flexibility. What if I told you that Cardia, and this is one reason why this is so powerful, is really the best of both worlds. Cardia is going to give you that deep level of control to decide exactly where the healing is going rather than potentially healing minor chip damage on the DPS like I talked about, or for mindlessly aiming healing at a, an overhealed already full health tank like regens can do. So since healers are getting a rework for all attacks to be 1.5 seconds, this is going to include the Sage's abilities like Dosis, which is their basic spammable, and since Cardia is an off GCD ability with a short cooldown of 5 seconds which also translates into two GCDs because one GCD I'm assuming is going to be roughly 2.5 seconds. This means that an adept sage will easily be able to weave cardia targets while getting damage off at the same time. So it's a persistent effect with a ton of control because you can change the cardia target which makes me a huge fan of the cardia system and this is why this system is truly bonkers. It's allowing a granular level of control while also being a persistent effect. That's exceedingly powerful, and no doubt, when used properly, can produce bonkers HPS values. This is actually something people should be excited about when I start this section. I think that if people go into the section and just take it at face value, that they might leave with like a sour taste in their mouth, but this should be something that excites you. When Cardia is first introduced, I feel that it's almost a little deceptive. You're looking at this skill's apparent simplicity when you read it, and it's just like, in my opinion, a little deceptive. While it can absolutely be very effective when just applied to a main tank, and you don't change the target at all, the trick is really in the details, where manipulating where Cardi is placed actively will distinguish the best of the best players from the average Sage player. And I, I always want to make sure that I'm like conveying this, but that, that isn't something that should worry people. This should be something that excites you and motivates you. This is really getting into like the nitty gritty and where we're having like most Sages, we'll just apply it to main tank and get away with it just fine, but we're gonna see some Sages pull off some really crazy cool tricks. We're looking at mechanical depth and master here. And really from there, that gets into the next wall that the cardio system does assume that you are going to be using your DPS skills a lot. A lot, a lot. And this may pose itself as a welcome challenge to players who aren't as comfortable to make the DPS values higher. And really, if you're not using DPS skills, I'm gonna kind of like look at it from this angle. I think that when it comes to the cardia system, whenever you're not actively using a damage spell, you're actually unfortunately wasting the cardia system, and since you're wasting it, actually let me clarify with that, we have white mages and astrologians with the regen effects they can apply, we have the scholar with the persistent fairy, the fairy isn't dependent on any factors to keep healing, but for the sage, effectively when you're stopping to DPS, you are kind of in a really 
very real sense being punished. Actually, I will devil down and say that every time you're not using a damaging spell, you are being punished 170 potency of healing. And because of that flexibility with Cardia, that's not something that you should just be okay with. You, it's like every time you are casting like Diagnosis or Prognosis on the GCD instead of a damaging spell, you're really actually losing. So I want to take a little bit of time and just look and pull up top ranking healers in current content, I should say, and look at Scholars and White Mages, and we can see that White Mages are casting a total of 147 points seven on GCD damage spells and the scholars are casting on average 163.5 on global cooldown damage spells honestly the reason for this disparity is probably just because white mages dia is not as good of a weave as ruin 2 is for scholar and then looking at these actual numbers from actual savage content imagine those being multiplied by 170 potency with the cardia effect but I will say that with the sage it's probably going to be even more cast because right now for scholar and white mage they need to explicitly weave in their off GCD ability so they need to actively stop casting glare or broil to weave and in the future since the healers are getting the 1.5 second cast times allowing a steady constant weave like ass does today it's likely that we're going to see an uptick of on gcd damage spell usage from this change that really gets into the takeaway for cardia this is definitely a buyer beware system if you pick the sage be ready to dps heavily or be open to the idea of learning how to it might be intimidating at first but as i've really always said on this channel practice is really important and it's something that anyone can do and it's really just a matter of getting yourself more familiar with it. I know that this is a very scary idea for a lot of newer healers or let alone new players to the game, but it's just something that if you practice you will get better at. That does definitely get into the warnings that I want people to like really understand with Cardia is that yes, this is a very, very powerful passive system that gives you a ton of control. You can weave it off of the GCD to change the cardio target. You will definitely be getting a metric ton of healing if you are DPSing often, and especially with the Sage's toolkit that I went over already, there's no excuse not to. This comes at the severe consequence that the way Cardia is set up and how it kind of like matches toe to toe against Scholar's Fairy is if you are not comfortable DPSing, and actively DPSing, you're really going to be losing a lot of efficiency to the Scholar where the pet is just healing in the background no matter if they're DPSing or if they're just spamming healing spells. So this is something that I really think, I, I, I'm actually probably going to do a video on it later, but I think that this is definitely something where if you are not as comfortable DPSing, you're going to find a lot more success on the Scholar as a barrier healer, but you, if you are very comfortable with the idea of manipulating Cardia with d different DPS spells, then you will find a lot of success with the Sage, no doubt. This is incredibly powerful. Anyhow, that's all for this video. Let me know what you think about the Cardia system in the comments.